Today, I have a deck that's going to help you amass success using a strange tribe. Stay tuned. Hello, Planeswalkers, and welcome back to the Signature Spell Bomb YouTube channel. I have missed you. We're going to have nine new deck techs, counting this one, coming out over the next nine weeks. And then we're going to try to get ahead of our production schedule a little bit so that I'm getting to you more often. I needed to take a slight break just due to life stuff, but you know, I'm happy to be back. A couple quick announcements before I get into this Nico Bolas the Dragon God deck tech. Uh, I am working on a novel over on Royal Road under the name C.A. Duchesne. If you want to check that out, that would be awesome. And then I am also looking at doing some other content and maybe getting a little bit of help for that. So um, if you have any questions, you know, please hit me up in the comment below. But I'm going to get into this deck tech and I'm going to try to keep it real short and sweet. In fact, that's why I'm trying this new layout is to see if I can keep the videos a little bit shorter and get you to the content faster. So first up, we have Nico Bolas, the Dragon God, as our Oathbreaker for a blue, three, black, and a red. He is a four loyalty planeswalker. Every plus, uh, he actually something worth mentioning here in Oathbreaker, he's great because he gets to steal the abilities of all the other planeswalkers on the battlefield. And that ability should not be uh, counted against. It's very good in most situations. His plus one is we draw a card and each opponent will exile a card from their hand or a permanent they control. That's just really good removal and that helps us control the game. And Nico Bolas is a really controlling planeswalker when you come to the MTG lore. His minus three is to destroy target creature planeswalker. And his minus eight is each opponent who doesn't control a legendary or uh, creature or planeswalker loses the game. That last ability is why most people pair him with the Elder spell. It allows them to kill all their opponent's planeswalkers and immediately minus eight him to win. I don't think I'm running Elder spell in this deck, but there is a slot in here that you could easily replace with Elder spell later on when I get through it. Next up is Lazotep Plating. This is actually an Amass Tribal slash Changeling deck. Changelings are all creature types, so they count as zombie armies. So whenever we would amass, we can put those woman encounters on changelings instead and control exactly where they go. It turns every amass spell into a, a pump for almost any creature we have um, and doesn't force us to put it on zombie army tokens. Um, the other part of Lazotep plating worth mentioning is it's a great protection spell in our deck. It's gonna give us and our permanents hexproof till end of turn. This can help us in a turn where we're going off or when a board wipe, well not a board wipe, but when a lot of things happen with interaction, this is a card that can save one of our permanents. Angrath, Captain of Chaos is two and two Rakdos. All of our creatures have menace. That little bit of evasion is gonna be important for our changelings. We do have some unblockable and flying options in the deck to help us get our damage through. His minus two is to amass two. That's simply gonna let us put two woman counters either on a zombie army token we control or on any of our changelings. Bloodline Pretender for three is a changeling. When enters the battlefield, we can choose a creature type. Whenever another creature of the chosen type enters the battlefield under our control, we put a woman counter on Bloodline Pretender. There's a couple different creature types in the deck you can choose from, you'll see when we go. Whatever you choose, you're gonna to wanna to be consistent. All the changelings will always get the benefit of the additional one one counter, but the other things won't. So we've got Changeling Outcast. It's a one one that can't block and can't be blocked. Really good evasion for our deck. Forerunner of the Coalition cares about pirates. When it enters the battlefield, we search our library for a pirate card. Whenever a pirate enters the battlefield under our control, each opponent loses one life. That actually works fairly well for this deck since all our changelings are pirates. All our changelings are also dinosaurs. So Forerunner of the Empire will let us go and get a changeling card and put that card on top of our library. Whenever a dinosaur enters the battlefield under our control, we can have Forerunner of the Empire deal one damage to each creature. So it's a nice little board wipe on a stick. Ghostly Changeling is a 2-2 Changeling that we can pump for one and a black. Grim Initiate is a 1-1 one, one First Strike Zombie Warrior that when it dies, we amass once. You might want to choose Zombie, now that I think about it. 
Popella Warden of the Waves is a 1 and 2 red 2-2 two, two that says spells that our opponents cast the target merfolk we control cost 2 more to cast and abilities opponents activate the target a merfolk we control cost 2 more to activate. So he's the only true mer merfolk in our deck. The rest of our changelings do an okay, you know, pretend they masquerade. There we go, that's the word. Lazotep Counselor is a 1-3 Zombie Wizard. Whenever we discard a card, we may pay one. If we do, we amass two. Lazotep Reaver for one in a black is a 1-2 Zombie Beast that whenever it enters the battlefield, we amass one. Lord of the Unreal is a 2-2 that gives our illusions plus one, plus one, and hexproof. So it just is really good protection for our board. If you ever want to build a Changeling deck, easily one of my favorite tribes. They really benefit from a lot of these niche tribal cards. Mistwalker is a 1-4 changeling with flying. We can pump its power, but it goes down in defense. Mothdash changeling is a 1-1, one, one, one blue mana changeling that we can tap another creature to give flying. Pyroclass Consulate for three and two red has kinship. At the beginning of our upkeep, we reveal the top. We looked at the top card of our library. Sorry, if it shares a pyro, if it shares a creature type with this card, you may reveal it. If you do, it deals two damage each creature. So just another board wipe on the stick for whenever there's a changeling on the top of our deck. Since we're running the two forerunners, we can actually make sure there's a changeling on our deck during certain points of time in the game for those triggers. Scrapyard Recombiner has Modular 2, so when it dies, we can put two 1 1 counters on another target artifact creature we control. It's only one other artifact creature in the deck, so that probably won't come into play, but we can tap and sacrifice any artifact to search our library for a construct card, reveal it, and put it into our hand, and then shuffle. So this will just let us go get any changeling since they are all uh, constructs, so why not? Skeletal Changeling is a 1-1 Changeling that regenerates for one and a black. Universal Automaton is a 1-1 Changeling. Venomous Changeling is a 1-3 Death Touch Changeling for two and a black. Water Spout Weavers has Kinship. During our upkeep, we may look at the top card of our library. If it shares a creature type with this card, you may reveal it. If you do, each creature you control gains flying till end of turn, which is really awesome. Bleeding Edge says up to one target creature gets minus two, minus two till end of turn of mass two. This is the card I would replace. Um, a lot of these cards are wonderful. I love them in a changeling deck, but this is a budget deck. So this is one of those cards where the better removal here is probably Elder Spell or another removal spell. The main reason it makes this list is because of that mass, but... It could easily go. We're also running Callous Dismissal for one and a blue. Return target non land permanent to its owner's hand in a mass one. This is, I think, a little bit better removal because we can also use it to protect our creatures or our planeswalker in a pinch. So keep that in mind that a lot of those bounce spells are way more useful than some people think. My buddy uh, Jeremy Rowe, who does the channel Unsummon Skull, Unsummon any spell that bounces is his bread and butter, so he can tell you and build you a deck around that if you ever want to check him out. Chart a course, cost one and a blue. You draw two cards, then discard a card unless you attack this turn. There's sometimes we're going to actually want to play this during our first main phase because discarding that card, we can pay one on that other zombie wizard we have to amass two. So it's a way to turn our discard into 1-1 one, one counters. Faithless Looting is in here for a similar reason. We draw two, discard two, to sculpt our hand a little bit, and it flashbacks for two and a red. Haunted Voyage for four and two black says we choose a creature type. We can return two target creatures from our graveyard to the battlefield. If this spell was foretold, we return all the creatures from our graveyard to the battlefield. So this can mass revive a lot of our creatures after a board wipe, but very useful. Um, don't know that you're going to want to spend... The total investment of what is that seven eight nine mana to do it but it is something to keep in mind honor the god pharaoh says an additional cost to cast a spell discard a card then you draw two cards and amass one invade the city says amass x where x is the number of instants and sorcery cards in your graveyard so this can be a big hit for us especially since we're running a lot of instants and sorcery cards that let us draw and discard it can help us fill our graveyard with those Stealth Mission is better a mass for two and a blue. We put two 1-1 one -one counters on any creature we control, and that creature can't be blocked this turn. 
Widespread Brutality is a one-sided board wipe in this deck. It will hit our non-zombie army, non-changeling creatures, but it says amass two. Then the army we amassed deals damage equal to its power to each non-army creature. Commence the endgame. I love this card, the art, the flavor, and everything. They're probably better cards to run in this spot, but it, it wins my heart. Um... We're four and two blue, it can't be countered. We draw two cards and then amass X, where X is the number of cards in our hand. Call to the Grave costs four and a black. It says at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a non-zombie creature. At the beginning of our end step, if no creatures are on the battlefield, we sacrifice Call to the Grave. So it's not just our end step, it's any end step. Sorry about that. Um, this is a wonderful card in this deck because it guarantees like a card removal every single turn from each player but us. It's very one-sided since all of our changelings are zombies, our zombie army tokens are zombies, and then we have a couple other Lazatep-plated things in the deck that are zombies. So, Crucible of Fire costs three in a red and gives all our dragons plus three plus three. Dread Horde Invasion lets us amass during each one of our upkeeps at the cost of one life. Then if we control a zombie token that has power six or greater, that token gains life link when it attacks. So this is a lot like, um, I can't think of the name of the card, but either it makes like a 1-1 one, one Might with Toxic or it makes a 1-1 one, one Flying Fairy. Uh, at the cost of one life every upkeep, except this has the plus side of letting us build a big zombie token and getting that life back that we've lost from having this spell up out. The other cards don't really have you a buyback on life. Liliana's Contract can help us win the game if we can survive. You probably want to keep mana up after you play this. It's enchantment that says when it enters the battlefield, you draw four cards and lose four life. Then at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control four more demons with different names, you win the game. All of our changelings are demons. They all have different names. They will count for this card, so that's... A uh, cheap and easy way to win in a deck like this. Shared Animosity says whenever a creature we control attacks, it gets plus one plus oh for each other creature, uh, each other attacking creature that shares a creature type with it. This is an amazing pump enchantment that will just stay on the board and help us turn after turn after turn. Uh, base Camp says we can tap it for colorless or we can tap it. For mana of any color, but we can only spend that mana on our party creatures, you know, clerics, robes, warriors, you know, those. Or to activate abilities of those types of cards. Animal Sanctuary can be tapped to put a one wing counter on a bird, a cat, a dog, an ox, goat, or a snake. Blight Step Path just helps us fix our mana. Command Tower is an excellent card in a deck like this since it's three colors. So we are running some three color lands like Crumbling ne Necropolis. Balming Wilds lets us get a basic of our choice and put it into play tapped. Exotic Orchard will probably get us the mana we need. Sitting down at a four player table, you'll probably be able to pick up either black or blue from another player would be my, my uh, experience. We've got Islands, Mountains, Swamps. I don't know what count of each. I think I did an even number of each. Uh, Swarm Yard can be tapped to regenerate an insect, rat, spider, or squirrel. So this can save one of our big creatures. Swift Water uh, Cliffs is just a budget way to fix our mana. Temple of the Dragon Queen is the same way. When we play, it enters the battlefield tapped unless we reveal a dragon card from our hand. Um, then we choose a color and it taps for one mana of the chosen color. Pyromorphic Expanse does the same thing as Evolving Wilds, pretty much. Thriving Bluff caps for a red, but it lets us uh, choose a color other than red, so it'll, it'll help us fix for our three colors. I'm actually running all three of the Thriving Lands in this deck it can run. So there they are. Um, and then we have Watery Grave. It's just a shock land I happen to have, so it might not make your budget at $17, but it's in my deck currently. And then that's it. That's the whole deck. I hope you guys enjoyed that and stay tuned for the whole video. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bounce out, but I hope you have a great rest of your day.